what would we see in East Tennessee? That was the million dollar question we had in mind throughout the long 500 mile trek to the volunteer state. In 2017, we were on the hunt for high hoods, but not just any high hoods. Lawast North America's elusive General Electric B23 7s. Lawast North America is a Belgium based mining company that owns and operates the former Franklin Industrial Minerals Limestone Mine at Crab Orchard, Tennessee. In the early 2000s, Norfolk Southern considered abandoning Franklin's only connection to the North American Rail Network, a 16-mile branch line with multiple high wooden trestles that were costly to maintain. As the only customer along the line, Franklin feared losing its vital connection and as a result, purchased the former Tennessee Central Main Line from Crab Orchard to Rockwood, Tennessee. As part of the purchase, Franklin acquired three General Electric High Hood B23-7 locomotives from Norfolk Southern. In 2006, Franklin Industries was sold to the Chemical Lime Company, a subsidiary of Lawast North America. Since taking over, Lawast continues to operate the railroad with Franklin's classic roster of GE products. Throughout the summer of 2017, Lawast leased a former Union Pacific GP38-2 from GATX to supplement its short-term power needs. During the first week of August, we were notified by local rail fans that the leased unit would be temporarily out of service for its mandatory 92-day FRA inspection. With that notice, we decided to travel nearly 500 miles from Michigan to Tennessee in an effort to document both high hood locomotives in revenue service. Lawast utilized both high hoods throughout the first week of August, except for Friday, August 4th, which happened to be the date of our visit. On any other railroad, it would be a delight to see a former Rio Grande GP35 car body and a former Seaboard Coastline B23-7 leading a freight train. However, on the former TC, it's a big letdown. Because of this frequent dilemma, GP40-3 number 3043 has been nicknamed the Spirit of Buzzkill by the local rail fans. Even though we ventured hundreds of miles to shoot the High Hood-7s in action, we still had a successful day chasing the two Lonos locomotives. The former Tennessee Central Railway main line winds through mountainous territory between Crab Orchard and Rockwood showcasing many large trestles and one unique tunnel at Mount Roosevelt, just a few miles west of Rockwood. Called the Willet Hollow Tunnel, the 722-foot bore was built through a former coal vein at the turn of the 20th century. Locomotive number 3043 was built by the Electromotive Division of the General Motors Corporation in 1964 for the Denver and Rio Grande Western as GP35 number 3033. The locomotive operated in revenue freight service for the Class 1 Railroad Company for 29 years before being retired in December of 1993. It was later sold to Omnitrax in January of 1995. The veteran diesel-electric locomotive was operated for a short time as leaser power for Great Western Leasing and was later sold to and rebuilt as Northern Plains Railroad No. 3501 in 1997. The signature Rio Grande gyrolite on the nose was removed and plated over at this time. The GP35 would serve the Northern Plains with several other GP35s for about 15 years before being sold to Mid-America Car Incorporated in 2013. Western Rail would later acquire and rebuild the unit yet again for customer Lawast North America in 2016. The unit was rebuilt as a GP40-3 being equipped with the Enforce 3 system and an EMD 645E 3B prime mover mated to an AR10 alternator. The prime mover and alternator were recycled from Amtrak F40PH number 316, previously owned by Larry's Truck and Electric.
The locomotive is now capable of 3,000 horsepower, which comes in handy over Lawast steep grades, which exceed 2%. Since adding the lone EMD to the roster, the two high hood GEs are usually relegated to switching service at the mine. Roughly 16 miles from Crab Orchard, the train arrived at Rockwood shortly after noon. As the train eased downgrade to the Norfolk Southern Interchange, the crew prepared to drop off the loads of limestone. After doing so, they will tie onto a cut of empties and head west for loading at the mine.
around 3 p.m. Eastern, the train departed for Crab Orchard. From Rockwood to the Willet Hollow Tunnel, the train would be climbing a nearly 5-mile-long 2% grade up Walden's Ridge. These vintage diesel electrics certainly had their work cut out for them. B-23-7 number 3138 was originally built by General Electric in 1978 for Seaboard Coastline as number 5149. Changing road numbers over the years, the 2,250 horsepower locomotive eventually became part of the CSX system in the 1980s where it pulled mainline freight trains until 2001 when it was purchased by Franklin to serve on the former Tennessee Central Railway. In 2012, the locomotive was repainted along with the rest of the railroad's roster into LaWasp's corporate blue, gray, and white paint scheme. It was the railroad's only low-nosed locomotive until recently, when LaWasp leased the GP38-2 from GATX in 2015 and later purchased the number 3043 in 2016. In ozone, we caught up with the train as raindrops began to trickle down from above. 
Due to the fact that there are many low-hanging tree branches along the railroad's right-of-way, most of Lawast's locomotives are equipped with semi-truck-style horns. The more expensive train horns were frequently damaged and were of great cost to the railroad. Number 3138 still retains a proper horn. Just outside of Crab Orchard, we caught the train one last time as it continued on to the mine. Although we didn't document the locomotives we had hoped to see, we had a successful day and would return several times to repeat the same hunt for high hoods, finally capturing them in service three years later. After nearly three years and numerous attempts at capturing Lawast's rare high hood GEs in action, Friday, June 12, 2020 would prove to be our lucky day. Around 10 a.m. Central, we found the train crew switching long cuts of covered hopper cars east of the mine with number 4021 and 4023.
delighted to finally document these vintage diesel locomotives in revenue service, we would record the hard-working train crew as they prepared their train for the 16-mile journey down the mountain to Rockwood, Tennessee. Crab Orchard is known as the stone capital of the Volunteer State because the small community is home to the largest high-purity limestone mine in the region. Lawast produces 3,000 carloads per year on average. The product is taken from the mine by trucks to the plant, where it is then milled to various sizes for different customers. The product is usually referred to as ground limestone, but is also commonly referred to as calcium carbonate, which is the main ingredient in the finished product. Lawast's mine at Crab Orchard has been in continuous operation for over 100 years. Wasps 3B23-7 high hood locomotives were built by General Electric in 1981 for the Southern Railway and were set up to run long hood forward. Just over a year later, they would become part of Norfolk Southern's roster where they operated in revenue service for 20 years before being acquired by Franklin Industrial Minerals in 2001. As of 2020, locomotive number 4021 can frequently be found switching cars at the Crab Orchard facility and is rarely used out on the main line. Lawast's only other operational high hood locomotive number 4023 is more frequently used on trains to Rockwood. It was the last B-23-7 built for the Southern Railway and was one of only two sublettered for the Carolina Northwestern. Often, 4023 can be found sandwiched between Lawast's two low-hood locomotives. In May of 1993, Ed Painter captured 4023 leading a local freight train through central South Carolina. At the time of this recording, Painter was living right next to the Norfolk Southern Main Line and filmed this scene from his backyard. In the early 90s, four-axle GEs were most commonly found on local freight trains. Norfolk Southern would retire the majority of its second-generation GE power by the early 2000s. Lawast No. 3999 was also acquired in 2001 by Franklin Industrial Minerals as a part source for its three other GEs. Ed Painter also documented the 3999 in revenue freight service back in 1985. Wearing the Southern Railway tuxedo scheme, the Carolina Northwestern reporting mark is easy to make out under the cab number. The locomotive has sat in place for nearly 20 years and is likely to be scrapped within the next several years. 
The train departed shortly after 11 a.m. Central. We would follow the Lawast crew the entire length of the railroad, capturing scenes at Ozone, Westall, the Willett Hollow Tunnel, and the Rockwood Interchange before chasing the train back up the Cumberland Plateau in the afternoon. The first location we caught the train at was Renfro Hollow. In 1918, a spur track was built here to serve a coal mine not far from this location. Five years later, the spur was removed. We would jump ahead to the Mammy's Creek Bridge east of Ozone. The 452-foot-long timber deck trestle located west of Daysville Road is a popular location for rail fans to capture photos of Lawast's GEs. East of the community of Westall, Lawast crosses the Piney Creek Bridge. Nicknamed the Time Zone Bridge, 
Piney Creek is where the central and eastern time zones are divided. The impressive steel bridge was constructed in 1898 and stands 111 feet tall while spanning 539 feet over the creek below. Nearly a mile to the east of Piney Creek is the Willet Hollow Tunnel. Easily accessible from Route 70, the East End Portal is a popular location for railroad photographers to capture trains before descending the nearly 5-mile-long 2% grade to Rockwood. The tunnel is at an elevation of 1,362 feet, while the Rockwood Interchange is 845 feet. Because of this steep grade, Lawast often uses three locomotives for added braking ability. At the interchange point, we set up our cameras to capture the vintage GEs performing switching duties. With a population of 5,500 people, Rockwood is located at the base of the Cumberland Plateau along the Tennessee and Clinch River Valleys. The city was once an important hub for the iron industry and was home to the Roan Iron Company, which closed in 1929.
While the train crew was busy sorting cars at the interchange, Lawast's maintenance contractor was also on site. Lawast uses contractors to maintain the 16-mile main line along with the many bridges between Rockwood and Crab Orchard. After nearly three years of failed attempts, we were grateful to finally document these two vintage GEs in freight service on the Wast North America's Railroad. In addition to Lawast, the only other railroad to operate a High Hood B-23-7 in its original configuration within the United States is the Huntsville and Madison County Railroad Authority in the state of Alabama. Locomotive number 3986 continues to haul freight on the short line nearly 40 years after being built by GE in Erie, Pennsylvania. Another High Hood B-23-7 remains on the Minnesota Commercial Railroad, but it is used as a road slug. Thankfully, the Wast North America values the history of these unique locomotives and has continued to faithfully maintain them well into 2020. East Tennessee Rail Car Services, a local rail contractor familiar with GE products, provides Lawast with reliable locomotive maintenance service. Lawast, along with ETRC, intends to use the high hoods as long as parts are readily available.
After the outbound cars had been switched into place at the interchange, the train crew prepared for the journey back to Crab Orchard. Following Southern Railway tradition, locomotive number 4023 led the train long hood forward up the steep 2% grade over Walden's Ridge. The two GEs would be working hard as they climbed 517 feet of elevation to the Willet Hollow Tunnel. Between 2008 and 2009, the Willet Hollow Tunnel experienced a series of collapses that forced Lawast to repair and reinforce the tunnel walls with concrete. The tunnel scaffold remains intact just outside the east end portal and is ready for use in the case another catastrophic collapse occurs. On the west end of the tunnel, the repair work to the portal foundation is evident, with a steel beam set in place to help prevent further collapses. Lawast is a private railroad and is not under the Federal Railroad Administration's jurisdiction. The FRA regulates public and intercity rail services, but does not have authority over closed railways like Lawast that operate exclusively on private property, such as a rail system between buildings at a steel mill, mine, or industrial complex. The FRA does not regulate subways, light rail, or elevated passenger rail systems without connections to public rail networks.
Daysville was once a station stop on the Tennessee Central. In the 1930s, a siding was constructed here that was capable of handling trains at 55 cars long. It is unknown when the siding was removed, but the ties where the switch once existed are clearly visible. Ozone is a small, unincorporated community located in Cumberland County, Tennessee. The community is situated atop the Cumberland Plateau and is home to Ozone Falls, a beautiful 110-foot waterfall created by the flow of Fall Creek into the gorge south of town. Because of its picturesque beauty and easy access, Disney selected Ozone Falls for filming scenes for the live-action 1994 movie The Jungle Book. Once again, we set up our cameras at Renfro Hollow, about a mile east of the mine at Crab Orchard.
at Crab Orchard, we caught up with the locomotives one last time. Typically, Lawast will cut the power from the empties before putting the locomotives away for the weekend. Lawast North America has an incredible operation in East Tennessee. Thanks to Lawast, the former Tennessee Central Main Line is alive and well, and will continue to be a return on investment for many years to come. Delay in Block Productions recognizes Lawast's efforts to preserve historic rail equipment and would like to thank them for their friendliness and hospitality to the rail fan community. Thank you for watching Delay in Block Productions. Until next time, happy railroading!